and I know we're getting close to needing a lunch break and to reset the video feed, um, but I do want to at least start on item 21 uh, specific to the upland portion and then we'll discuss as a commission whether we want to take a break before we get into fur bears or not. So uh, this is entering our commission regulation and commission general regulation uh, adoption for possible action period. Uh, item 21 is our first regulation for consideration and this is commission regulation 16-13 and it's the 2016-17 and 17-18 upland game and fur bearer seasons and bag limits. Uh, wildlife specialist Sean Espinoza will present the upland portion and Russell Wilsonhume will present the fur bearer portion. Uh, this is for possible action. The commission will establish regulations for seasons, bag limits, and special regulations for upland game birds, rabbit, wild turkey, fur bears, and falconry seasons for the 2016-17 and 17-18 seasons. Mr. Espinoza. Uh, thank you once again, Chairman Drew. Uh, Sean Espinoza for the record, uh, Nevada Department of Wildlife Upland Game Staff Specialist. Uh, as a recommendation to the commission, just to break this up a bit, I would suggest that uh, we break this up by handling page one and two, the use seasons, uh, as one separate item, and then uh, pages three and four, dealing with sage grouse seasons, as another separate item, pages five and six, uh, which are all other upland game bird species, as one item, and then pages seven through 10, dealing with wild turkey, as one item, and then page 11, dealing with the falconry seasons as a separate item. Okay, I can sure. Okay, um, for the youth season this year, we're actually recommending uh, a week-long season with two uh, weekends involved um, with a, a daily bag limit of six, possession limit of 18, and uh, we're also recommending that uh, the age limit requirements be extended to those hunters of 17 years of age and younger uh, rather than the, the old requirement which was 15 years of age and younger and this would put it in line with the uh, waterfowl recommendations and age requirements as well um, plus it gives uh, opportunity for youth uh, who can't make that particular weekend they get an extra weekend to try and uh, participate in that hunt. Questions for Sean or the recommendation? Okay. I, I would just say that I really appreciate uh, the changes. I think they're very positive. I think it provides a good opportunity to take advantage of a resource that surely is going to be out there this year given the conditions we have. So appreciate the forward thinking on that. Um, County Advisory Board input on the Upland Game uh, youth, youth Seasons for CR 1613. Uh, I'm Sean Shea, Washoe County. Um, since we didn't break it up like that, um, I'll just do what we had little recommendations. So for under the youth part, um, we just thought it would be a good idea under youth rabbit season where it says limits, where it says daily bag limit is 10, possession is limit is 30, is to put a little asterisk right there just to draw attention to the pygmy rabbit in the special regulations. I mean, and it, it'll, it'll, it'll come into the, the adult one once we get into that section too, but just to draw a little bit of attention to that special regulation. Additional county advisory board inputs. Okay, how about public comment in Las Vegas on the youth seasons? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, no, no comment, thank you. And Reno? Reno. No comment in Reno. Okay. Any public comment in Elko? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the commission. Are there any further questions or discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion on the upland portion of CR 1613. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we, uh, we accept the... Uh, CR 16-13 is presented by the department um, with the understanding, Sean, if there's a way to, to note that, to highlight it, I agree that there needs to be a little highlight there. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. <coughs> so I have a motion by Commissioner McNinch, a second by Commissioner Bliss to approve that portion of CR 16-13 
pertinent to youth upland game seasons uh, with one update, and that would be to add uh, asterisk or notation on page two for youth rabbit uh, limits. So that draws more attention to the special limit on pygmy rabbit. Sean, that's clear as to what we're looking for there? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Any question or discussion on the motion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 8-0, which brings us to Sage Hand. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Drew. Uh, sage grouse seasons, um, we've got several season structures. Um, but for Hunt Unit 184, the Desatoya Mountains in Churchill and Lander County, and Hunt Unit 031, the Montana Mountains and Bill Creek Mountains of Humboldt County, we're recommending uh, a two-day season extending from the first Saturday uh, in October to the second. So October 1st and 2nd, for example, would be this year's season for those particular hunt units. Um, in the eastern region, uh, you'll see uh, quite a few hunt units that would be included in that particular hunt. Uh, one change that probably we should draw attention to is the inclusion of hunt unit 076 and 081 uh, in northeastern Elko County. Uh, we're seeing pretty positive response of habitat uh, post-fire up there in, in the Gullier area, and uh, lek counts are, are responding as such. Um, we're seeing some pretty measurable increases in average lek attendance in that part of the state and uh, relatively low uh, hunter use in nearby units. Um, so that would extend from the fourth Saturday in September through the second Sunday in October for uh, both years. Uh, in the lower box here, that represents basically the western region of our state. Uh, hunt units 012, 034, and 051 in Humboldt County and then hunt units 011 through 015 in Washoe County would be a nine-day season open from September 24th through October 2nd. Uh, and one change there, we are recommending uh, reopening hunt unit 015 in Washoe County, the Buffalo Skedaddle PMU. And then um, for the Sheldon Special Sage Grouse Hunts, um, we're recommending going from just one season and adding a second season, uh, the first season being the third Saturday and se Sunday in September, uh, and, the f and the second season being the fourth Saturday uh, and Sunday in September, two-day seasons basically with 75 reservations each. Uh, and we've seen some pretty positive responses in lek counts on the Sheldon last year and this year, and uh, really good recruitment rates uh, over two chicks per hen uh, for the last two years in the Sheldon. Okay. Questions for Sean or comments? Sean, I just had two quick questions. In the past, I think the last two years, we had a map that kind of depicted those different seasons by hunt unit. Is it the department's intent to post that again? We will do that again. One yes, one. absolutely. And then I'm assuming the Sheldon hunts were either recommended by or closely coordinated with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service? Yes, they were. They're supportive? Yep. Okay. Anything else from the commission? Okay, seeing none, County Advisory Board input on Regulation 1613 specific to sage grouse. For the record, Paul Dixon Clark. First, I'd like to thank Sean for breaking his recommendations up to you the same way that I did it in my cab, so I can follow very easily here. Uh, in, in discussion at, at the Clark cab, there was a there were questions asked about you know how we use the uh, what harvest numbers were the last couple of years, and I didn't have it readily at my fingertips. So in the future, having that as backup. And then also how the wing hunt data that's collected is used in the conservation and the conservation efforts of, of sage grouse. And again, I'm not an expert enough to be speaking on that. So either having somebody from the department that could speak at that at the cab or having a little one page kind of a fact sheet that I could read to to the public to give them a little confidence of why hunting a bird that we looked at listing actually is leading to its increase in numbers and, and to the fact that we're actually conserving it out there because it's, it's anti-intuitary, intuitive to people, intuitive, intuitive to people of what we're doing. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Additional County Advisory Board inputs. Seeing none public comment in Las Vegas on the sage grouse seasons. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Reno. No comment in Reno. Okay. Anything in Elko? 
Mr. Shea. <clears throat> Sean Shea, this is just my personal thing. Um, I just wanted to, I really like to see the, the, the wing barrels out there. And I, I think that's when people drive by and they just, they always ask me, hey, what are those barrels for? And I describe that they're wings for aging and sexing, all that. So there's getting information from them. I just, I just, I like to see that. And when people ask me, um, I just say, you know, it's one thing the state's doing for it. And I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Additional public comment in Elko on sage grouse seasons? Seeing none, uh, Sean, that, some of the comment did bring up one more question for me, and that's um, harvest numbers. I know we have some guidelines that we follow from WAFWA, and I think Fish and Wildlife Service has some input on that. Have we seen anything in the last two years that suggests we're pushing uh, those, those harvest guidelines? Are we comfortable with where we're at? Maybe just a word on that. And then I, I do agree with what Clark's saying in terms of it would be good in support material going forward and for <laughs> Mr. Shea's comment, maybe even providing a one-page handout on what the wings are used for at the wing barrels and with the calves because I think it would help get a lot of that information out. Yeah, sure. So uh, thanks, Chairman Drew. So in response to that, uh, that first question, um, you know, one of the overarching guidelines from the Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies is not exceeding that 10% uh, harvest rate of the fall population. Um, we're somewhere within that 4 to 6% per percent range of the, the total population estimate. Um, so I think we're, we're well within the guidelines there. Um, and that largely has to do quite a bit with hunter participation, which is which has declined over the years, as it has for some other upland game species as well, which is unfortunate. Um, but uh, there's been some more recent uh, uh, in investigations into uh, how all states are doing in terms of harvest and what type of effect that has. Um, that publication hasn't come out yet, but I think the ultimate conclusion from the researcher, as we heard last week at the Sage and Columbian Sharp-tailed Grouse workshop, was that states were being very responsive in, in managing their sage-grouse populations in a very conservative manner. And I think they found that basically that that was not affecting population growth rate annually from year to year. Um, so our seasons are very short, either nine or six days, 16 day seasons with very conservative um, uh, bag and possession limits, so. Thank you. Additional questions or comment? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion on the sage grouse portion of CR 1613. Chairman, I'd move to approve the sage grouse seasons and bag limits for 2016-2017 and 2017-2018 as presented in CR 16-13. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Johnston and a second by Commissioner McNinch to approve that portion of 16, uh, CR 1613 regarding all sage grouse seasons as presented today by the department. Any questions or discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously, which will bring us to upland game seasons. Uh, thank you, Chairman Drew, members of the commission. Uh, so we'll start out with uh, dusky and sooty grouse. Um, really, the, the change here is to increase the possession limit to nine uh, from six as it was uh, over the last two seasons. Um, snowcock, Himalayan snowcock, we're actually recommending no change there. The season would be September 1st through September 3rd, or November 30th, uh, daily and possession limit of two birds. Uh, for chucker and Hungarian partridge, uh, basically the same season structure as we have had in the past. The second Saturday in October through the first Sunday in February, uh, same bag and possession limits on chucker and Hungarian partridge. Uh, for California gambles and mountain quail, for California and gambles quail, we're actually recommending a possession limit increase at uh, 230 birds, which falls in line more with federal uh, recommendations for uh, migratory upland game species like morning dove. Uh, but that season would uh, begin the second Saturday in October and conclude the first Sunday in February, uh, except for mountain quail. Uh, and we will include um, an asterisk there uh, regarding uh, mountain quail to draw attention that that daily in possession limit is actually two and four. For pheasant, we're recommending no change there from prior seasons. 
um, except for the possession limit being six for pheasant, and uh, the season would extend from November 1st through November 30th. And then for cottontail, pygmy, and white-tailed jackrabbits, uh, seasons basically to remain the same in terms of season length, se second Saturday in October through the first or through February 28th, um, with the possession limit increased to 30 rabbits, except for pygmy rabbit, uh, of which we would include a asterisk there drawing folks' attention to that uh, for pygmy rabbit, a two daily uh, limit and four in possession for pygmy rabbit. <coughs> Questions for Mr. Espinoza? Comments? Sean, the only one I had is on the mountain quail. Um, are we that concerned with uh, where we're at population-wise with not moving that to six in possession? Um, you know, that was a discussion that we didn't have during our upland game meeting. Um, with as conservative as we are for mountain quail, I don't think that that would be a big deal. Okay, and how about on pygmy rabbit? I think that's the only one that's not consistent. Um, again, I think we get such light participation in pygmy rabbit hunting that that probably wouldn't be a significant difference either way. Possession limits really aren't a uh, driving factor. Daily limits might be, but not possession limits. Right, and I understand that. Just for the sake of consistency, I was wondering if mm -hmm. there was a reason we weren't recommending six. Okay, anything else? Okay, County Advisory Board inputs on pages five and six of the Upland Regulations, which is all the uh, blue and rough grouse, snowcock, Hungarian and chucker, partridge, quail, pheasants, and rabbits. Okay, public comment in Las Vegas. The mountain quail and no, the valley no quail. It, it's pretty, it's the same show. color, it's got a different knock. No comment in Vegas, so Reno, public comment. No comment in Reno, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and we'll bring it back. Any comment in Elko? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the commission. Is there any further discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve uh, those portions of CR 16-13 relevant to blue and rough grouse, snowcock, chucker and Hungarian partridge, California gambles and mountain quail, pheasant, and cottontail, pygmy, and white-tailed jackrabbits, as proposed with the noted asterisk <coughs> that we put into the document. Is there a second? I'll second. Would there be any objection to a friendly amendment to increase the uh, possession limit on mountain quail from four to six, and the same with pygmy rabbit? No, I don't have enough. I don't have opposition. Is the second okay with including that? Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the table uh, for that portion of CR 1613 for blue and rough grouse, snowcock, chucker, and Hungarian partridge, uh, all the quail species, pheasant, and all the rabbit species as presented by the department. Uh, with two changes, one being that we call attention to the bag limits on quail and uh, rabbits, and that we adjust the possession limits on mountain quail from four to six, as well as pygmy rabbits from four to six. Sean, is that clear? Any questions or discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thanks, Chairman Drew. So we're on to wild turkeys now. Um, the junior, so for all turkey seasons, one of the things that uh, is different from years prior, uh, is we did have a 4 p.m. closure, we're actually recommending that that uh, uh, hourly or, or the shooting hours be extended until sunset daily. Um, for the junior wild turkey hunt, um, really the, the major change is we're recommending a junior only uh, wild turkey hunt in Lincoln County. Uh, so we're adding a hunt there. Um, moving along to the, the general wild turkey hunt or limited entry wild turkey hunt. Um, one of the changes we're recommending is for an additional tag in unit 151 and 152 of Lander County 
going from uh, one tag to two tags there, um, recommending a season to be opened in Lincoln County from the last Saturday in March through the first Sunday in May with a quota of, of five tags. Um, we're recommending adding a non-resident tag for the Mason Valley uh, Wildlife Management Area of Unit 203 uh, for the first season in each year. In Pershing County, we're recommending uh, the additions of, of two tags in each uh, hunt period, as well as a non-resident tag. And then for the general spring turkey hunts, the only change was we were recommending closing uh, hunt unit 192, which you will not see on there, of Douglas County. Uh, it appears most of those turkeys have moved into California. Okay, questions for Sean? I'm going to have a couple. You covered one with 192 and the movement, and I think we had issues getting access to some of the private property anyway. Yes, we did. In terms of uh, changing or adjusting the season or the shooting hours back to sunset, um, what was the discussion on that, and do we anticipate um, an increase? I would anticipate a tremendous increase in success, particularly in Mason Valley and maybe to some degree Overton, where they're relying on the cottonwood galleries and the roost trees. Um, I know it would make life a lot easier based on what I've observed out there. So you're going to have to sell me on that one because I think 4 p.m. was pretty reasonable. Let's talk yeah, turkey, Mr. Wakeling. Mr. Wakeling, good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, this idea actually came from several members of the public. Um, it is a question that we did ask on the, on the harvest guidelines survey that we have yet to share with the commission. Um, the public support for it was overwhelming. Um, the, uh, the concept is also something that's, that's adopted in uh, virtually every other state, um, uh, with the exception of California. California also has a, an early uh, season uh, closing, or day in the time of the day closing. Um, hunt success is already dramatically high on most of these hunts. And so um, we really believe that the effect on the harvest is going to be pretty negligible. Um, the, the, the number of tags are pretty conservative at, as well. And then in that vein, I guess that leads into my second question. In terms of the Mason Valley WMA, I think we actually doubled the number of seasons we have. So we have our two-week seasons that overlap. Is that the way I'm reading it? And we increased our overall tags? No. The, 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 the number of seasons has always been three, but I had to break it out this way because putting a standard start date of, say, the last Saturday in March through the first Sunday in April did not work. And I think it has to do with this leap year, so I don't want to get into that again where we're making an amendment I, to fix things where if you said that, it would be only a two-day hunt. I failed to see the years change, so perfect. Yep. Appreciate that explanation. Okay. Further question or discussion? Seeing none, County Advisory Board input on CR 1613 pertinent to wild turkeys. For the record, uh, Paul Dixon, Clark County. Uh, several things. Uh, in the uh, Moapa Valley portion of Clark County under youth, we had asked last year to move that season to start a week earlier for the youth. It turns out the way that we issue our heritage tags, we were basically putting youth and heritage tag holders in Moapa Valley hunting at the same time, and there was a lot of grousing about that. So it has been recommended by our board that we ask you to move the season to match the other seasons in the system so the heritage tag holders truly have a heritage tag option without competing with other people, including youth. That was one. And then number two is in the um, well turkey seasons and limits uh, Clark County has asked in the past that we move the non-resident tag, kind of rotate it through the system. And based on when we had the non-resident tag last year, it would make logical sense that the non-resident tag uh, for 2017 be issued for the March 25th to the March 31st hunt season. And then it would follow through because last year it was in the last season. So this year it should have logically moved to the first season. And so that would be the two recommended changes that we had. 
understand. Chairman, any questions? Everyone understand that? Say the second one again, Paul. Second one again is that right now we currently have the um, the hunt season where you know the, for the non-resident. We suggested right now it sits in the second season. Last year it sat in the third, and we've been rotating it. We asked to rotate it through, so logically it should sit at the first season this year, not the middle season. That was all. Which is the uh, March thirty, March twenty fifth to March thirty first hunt season. Any other questions? At that, Commissioner Young, clear on the recommendation. Okay, Thank you. additional county advisory boards. Seeing none, public comment in Las Vegas on wild turkey seasons. No public comment in Las Vegas, Mr. Chairman. And Reno. <coughs> I think I see one in Reno. Uh, Elaine Carrick, um, I'm sitting here as a member of the general public, and uh, I've heard a lot of extension of um, the seasons. I've heard bag limits increased uh, in two instances. Bag limits were increased without any uh, data given. Um, uh, it seems that most of the uh, increases, there was no justification or information given to the public as to what is the situation of these uh, birds and how can they simply be arbitrarily uh, increased. Um, that that does give me concern, and, and those are my comments. Thank you. Okay, anything else specific to the wild turkey seasons? No okay. more comment in Reno. And comment Nelco. Rex, come on up. Rex Flowers speaking for myself. Um, on the wild turkey, on the hunting hours, your heritage tags all end each day at 4 p.m. this year and next year. And now you're looking at giving general public the opportunity to hunt till 6. So you might want to take that into consideration. Thank you. Additional comment? Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. I'd just say that I'm comfortable with the changes, but I will not be supportive of changing from 4 p.m. to sunset. That's where I stand. Additional comments, questions, discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Valentine? Mr. Chairman, regarding, regarding the hunting hours, mm -hmm. it's been my experience as far as, well, my experience hunting turkeys that what I've seen in is turkeys rarely fly up to the roost until it is almost dark, dark. So I don't see the sunset as being an issue. Um, that's all I have to say. Okay. Additional inputs? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. McNinch. Mr. Chairman, I guess, you know, until, until the Rex brought up the heritage tags. I guess I had some appetite for it, but it does bother me a little bit. Um, you, Brian, did you have a thought you're going to share with us? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner McNinch, um, I just real quickly uh, checked, and uh, we do have the ability to come back and amend that, at, for instance, at the August Commission meeting, should we choose to do so, and the heritage tag could also be an annoyance to uh, Chairman Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost before. Does that answer your question? Additional discussion? Sean, did you have something to add? I just had a point of clarification. If I could ask uh, Clark County uh, uh, member Dixon, that, that non resident tag uh, for 2018 would remain as recommended right now? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Not I'd entertain a motion. I'll try Mr. Young. Uh, I'll recommend that uh, the commission approve CR 16, 13, 2016, and 17, and 27, 2017 and 2018 seasons as related to wild turkey with the following uh, additions. First being match other seasons to, uh, this was from uh, Clark County, staff chairman uh, Paul Dixon's 
recommendation to match other seasons to not interfere with heritage tax. The second part was uh, match the heritage, uh, match the season times with the heritage to, uh, season times and adjust it to 6 o'clock instead of 4 o'clock. Direct conflict with what you said, Jeremy, but I agree with Paul from what I've, I've heard about the county churches. And I think that's it. Okay, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Young and a second by Commissioner Morai to approve uh, that portion of CR 1613 in regards to wild turkeys as presented by the department. Um, and just to be clear, we would uh, be adjusting the, with this motion, the shooting hours from one hour before sunrise to sunset, uh, rather than a, a specific time. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we would adjust the um, youth season consistent with Clark County's recommendation, which is on page seven. And Sean, do you have the specific language on how that would read? For us? I'm sorry, uh, Chairman Drew, what was the question again? On page seven, we were gonna adjust Moapa Valley's youth season. Yes. So would that be the final Saturday in March? That Correct. Last Saturday in March. And we would also, excuse me, Jeremy, add, uh, I think Paul made the recommendation that uh, we go to the first season, Paul. For the non-resident. For the non-resident. For 2017. Okay. Give me a page on that so we're all clear. Uh, page nine. Page nine. nine, I think. Yeah. Now let me find page nine. Okay, so specifically on page nine, we're talking Moapa and we're changing what? 2017 non resident to the first time. Okay. So we would go basically add one non resident hunt to the March 25th to 31st time frame for 2017, and there'd be no change to 2018. Okay. Is everyone clear on that motion now? Any further discussion or comments, questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, nay. Motion carries 7-1, Drew, the nay. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will go to page 11. Uh, recommendation from the department for falconry season. Open areas would be statewide. Uh, season date September 1st through the last day of February with a daily bag limit of two, possession limit of eight. Um, this would be um, all resident upland game birds except turkey and sharp-tailed grouse uh, that would be applied to falconry seasons. Um, taking of sage grouse by falconry is only allowed in those hunt units where there is an established open season and the daily and possession limits are two and four, uh, just like they would be for any normal uh, general sage grouse season. Questions? Comments? Seeing none, County Advisory Board input on falconry. Just that and Sean Shanksy. For the record, Paul Dixon, there was a question raised at the Clark Cab meeting about why the bag limits for falconry are different than shotgun season for the other uh, game birds. And I, I look carefully, but there's there's a difference in the in the take limits if you if you read the language, and so I just wondered why that was with falconry. What's that? Possession limit. Possession limit. I mean, yes. So why that was for falconry versus you know gun season? Thank you. Okay, we'll get we'll get back to that. Additional county advisory board input. Okay, public comment in Las Vegas on falconry. No public comment in Las Vegas. And Reno? No comment in Reno. Anything in Elko on falconry? Public comment? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the commission. Question or discussion? Sean, I guess just why the difference on possession. I think what I heard you say the last time we discussed this was that the possession typically doesn't drive uh, the, the take or the harvest. It's more the limits. Yeah. And the, uh, limit. Chairman Drew, members of the commission, um, eight to ten years ago, uh, there was a movement by falconers to address this, and, and 
this is basically the season structure that they wanted, and we didn't feel that that had any uh, negative biological implications. So uh, we basically went with the falconer's recommendation there. Okay. Additional questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Chairman, I move to approve the falconer season as set forth in CR 16-13. Second. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Johnston, a second by Commissioner Wallace to approve that portion of Commission Regulation 1613 pertinent to falconry season as presented by the department. Is there any question or discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously, which I believe Sean brings us to the end of Buckland. <coughs> yep, okay. that's correct. Appreciate that. Um, before we do move on, uh, we are at 1 o'clock straight up. My recommendation would be to take an hour lunch and come back and deal with fur bearers. Seeing head nods. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a one-hour lunch.